Welcome to my kitchen this morning. Well, it's a beautiful spring, late spring day, not quite yet summer. It's um, been raining a lot, but today it's a beautiful sunny day. But I cannot get out there today because I've got a lot to do inside. I've got my sourdough in here. I've got to get it out and divide it into loaves. So I'll be doing that this morning. I thought I'd bring you along with me. I've got uh, my little baking silicone pad that I put down so that everything won't stick when I'm rolling my bread out. I've got a little bit of flour on here. There's a little bit of corn oil in this bowl and I have two pans. Now usually I just use a um, regular size bread pan, three little bread loaves, that's what I've used for years. But lately I've been liking these little pans right here. I'm going to go ahead and put oil on these, brush oil on them. Now this one is dark. Whenever you use a darker pan, your whatever you cook in it is gonna have a darker crust. When you use a lighter pan, it'll have a lighter crust. Now I'm gonna turn you around here so that you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just gonna brush this corn oil all over this pan. Both pans, so that when I get the sourdough bread out and I divide it into threes, or in this case, two, since I'm gonna make just two loaves today in these bigger pans than I usually do, then I'll have somewhere to put the dough. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these pans ready. I'm putting it on with a brush, I'm trying to make sure no little hairs from the brush stick in my pan. It's recommended to use corn oil, avocado oil, coconut oil, something like that, but not regular vegetable oil. And the reason for that is re regular vegetable oil can get sticky. And so the, the sourdough recipe that I've used for years, a friend of mine's mother gave it to me right when I had my first, started having my first children. She gave me that handwritten sourdough recipe. And I have been using that all these years. And it seems like sourdough is coming back into style. It has a wonderful flavor. It's already a little bit uh, pre-fermented. So it digests better. And it seems like a lot of people are back on the sourdough bandwagon. I don't rely solely on sourdough, and I'll uh, share that with you here in a bit. I've got my sourdough starter right here, and I feed that on a regular basis, and I keep that going. Here is my sourdough bread. Let's see if I can lift it. I might I can't lift it with just one hand. Here is my sourdough bread that I mixed up last night, my dough. It's risen all during the night. I'm gonna have to punch this down. And in this case, I'm just gonna divide it into the two loaves to go into my bread pans. But normally I would just have three small uh, loaf pans and that's what I've divided it into for years, but I've been liking these better But I'm going to punch this down and I'm going to put it out here and roll it out Now I mixed this up last night and I put it in my oven with nothing but the oven light on To keep it warm enough so it would rise all night So I'm punching it down this morning From where it has risen And I'm just going to work it in 
work it around and knead it a little bit. So by it being in the oven like all night last night, you can see that it surely took a while for this to rise. And today when I divide it into the loaves that I'm going to use, I'll have to put it in pans and it'll have to rise more until it rises to the top of the pan or until it doubles. So it's no quick thing. This is not a quick bread. Sourdough takes a while. You have to think in advance. You have to get in a routine if you want to use it on a regular basis. It takes thought, planning, and process. Processing time. So that's quite a bit going on for your bread. But if you don't get to make sourdough, there are plenty of wonderful, wonderful just white bread, yeast white breads that are easy to, to put together for your meal. I'm going to have to cut this so that I can make the loaves that I need to go in my pans. One of my pans is bigger than the other, so I'll have to make one of my loaves slightly bigger and then a slightly smaller loaf. So that's what I'll be doing right here. I'll just take maybe a third for the smaller loaf and two thirds for the bigger loaf. Now this dough is a little wet this morning, it's a little shaggy, that means it has a lot of moisture. And you can use the same recipe and your dough might turn out different each time because of the moisture and the humidity in the air. Now I'm just going to take this bigger loaf I've got going on right here. And I'm just going to, I think I'm going to take a little bit more. I don't know, it looks kind of like that's going to be a skimpy loaf, doesn't it? I'm just trying to get it evened out so it'll look good. The finished product will look good when I get it in my bread pans. Now I'm just going to take a minute and just knead each one of these bowl uh, loaves. A lot of people don't like to add extra flour. I like to add it as needed. So I don't have a big sticky mess. It's hard to roll out a big sticky mess. So that's why you'll see me adding a little bit of flour. I had a about a half a cup of flour over here, and I just worked that in as needed to keep this bin so sticky that I can't handle it. There's a little kneading going on, and I just take the palms of my hands and I press the dough forward and pull it back. You can see how shaggy my dough is this morning. And I just keep pressing forward and pulling back. A silicone mat like this helps if you're making homemade baked goods because it makes cleanup so much easier. It's starting to feel like it needs to feel. It's not quite as shaggy and wet.
when you knead your bread, it, it uh, increases and, and it loosens the gluten that's in your flour, your bread mixture here. And that looks like about a loaf of bread that I'm going to need to put in this pan. I've already got my corn oil in here. And I'm just going to pick up my little loaf that I've got going on here and put it in my pan to rise. It'll have to have a second rising in these pans. And when it's doubled in, in its height and risen, you know, pretty close to the top of the pan, it'll be time for me to bake this bread. So I won't be able to get this bread done by lunch today. I may get it done by dinner, depending on how fast it rises. This can take as long as you want it to take, the kneading part. If you need some therapeutic time to just knead your bread, I don't think you can knead it too much. I've never had a lot of time to do a lot of kneading the bread. I just needed, I just got to do it as much as, it, as I needed for it to, to make bread, so. We got our two loaves here. I'm going to put these back in here in the oven so that they can rise. I just have the light on in the oven, and that creates a warm, safe space for me to put the bread. Well, our bread has risen double in its size. So it's time to bake it. I've got the oven on 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm just going to go ahead and put the bread in. For about 30 to 35 minutes. Well, the bread's done. I got it out sitting here and I've put butter on it. So I'm going to give it a few, a little bit, and then I'm going to take it out of the pans and put it on a wire rack and let it cool. And here's the two loaf of, loaves of bread once they've cooled. Now, this one is, uh, you know, like a regular piece of bread. This one's smaller. And this one I will juice just maybe to. Put on the side of a soup or a cheese, maybe a charcuterie tray. Of course, I've ate a few little pieces of this. As you know, you have to taste it and see how it tastes. So good, so good. This, of course, would be good on a bowl of soup or just a few little pieces of bread with anything. And, of course, this would be your sandwich bread. And you can slice it as thin or as thick as you would like it. I tend to like my homemade bread sliced thin.
Well, there's the bread that we've got made. That's the sourdough bread. One of my favorite ways to eat that sourdough bread is with melted cheese. Just toast, put it in a toaster oven with a slice of cheese and melt it. Uh, provolone is especially delicious. Thank you for letting me share, share with you how to uh, roll out the bread and bake it today, the sourdough bread. You know, it smells delicious. It's a wonderful thing, and I'm glad you let me share it with you. Thank you for joining me today, and like always, until next time. Thank <laughs> you.